You should be happy that there's a firefighter and a police officer and first responders and soldiers who are willing to fight and die for the country that you live in. Because if they weren't, if they weren't manly men, there would be other men around the world that would come here and take what they want from you. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, you know, time and time again, you know, you find more and more videos on the internet. And I know that's a that's a rabbit hole in itself. I think it's a precursor to what culture is. More and more, you keep seeing videos of you know, women just degrading men. They have the most absurd things that they feel about men. That if men in, in return would say that about women, they would be consternated. They would be ripped apart on the internet. Like in our first clip. Um, I'm assuming this is some kind of podcast, I'm not really sure, but these horrible, horrible women really feel that men should go through a lot more struggles to be men. Before we get into the video, I need to tell you a secret. I need you to hit the like and the subscribe button. I need to fight against the YouTube algorithm because I'm on the road to 1000. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Let's get into it. Men should be homeless. I don't think yeah. to, I don't think women Thank should be allowed you. to be homeless. Men need to toughen up, and I think if yeah. men were forced to be homeless, they would learn how to be better men. Because yeah. that's what made men manly in the past was having to build houses and stuff. Especially because we're not we we don't force men to do military anymore like they used yeah. to. They make them homeless for a year. Let's see how they fucking yeah. Make them just figure it out. But make them homeless in a country where they don't know the language, and oh, that yeah. way they really they really have to go through something. You see th this horrible bars that, that they want men to have to go through and jump through, not realizing that they are the most protected class of human being on planet Earth. We protect them, you know, more than they will ever know. Men have built this world to basically couple them to luxury. The reason they're able to sit there and run their mouths the way they do is because of men of the past. Who have fought and died for their freedoms. And I'm speaking specifically for the Western world. They don't have to face the draft. There's massive amounts of programs for women to go to to get a helping hand. There's barely any for men. And you want men to be manly men. Well, guess what? We made the world so soft and so easy that we were able to put women on equal footing in the professional world, aka the workplace in air-conditioned offices. You're lucky that the world isn't that harsh because your soft hands could never do it. You're not physically adapted to, to live in a rougher world than what you do. You should be happy that there's a firefighter and a police officer and first responders and soldiers who are willing to fight and die for the country that you live in. Because if they weren't, if they weren't manly men, there would be other men around the world that would come here and take what they want from you. So instead of spitting in the face of all the men that are there to protect you, maybe you should probably think of ways to maybe help those men succeed to become the men that you think they should become. Which is laughable in itself. A woman telling a man how to be a man. Because I'm not going to do that. I, as a man, not going to tell you how to be a woman. Your mother should have taught you how to be a woman. Your grandmother should have taught you how to be women. But obviously, you didn't learn. And then our next clip proves that the world is not as, as comfy as women would like it. Men don't have, you know, a natural complaint every month to use to say, Hey, I need off of work. I, I can't do my job because of X, Y, and Z. Our next clip proves that there's a push in the workplace for things like this. In 2024, women still are not able to go home and take off of work during their menstrual cycles. Why is this not a thing? I don't understand it because I have really painful periods and that I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of women and I still have taken things for it. Like it doesn't fix it, but it is a really awkward situation trying to go to your managers, especially me working in a male dominated industry saying like, hey, I'm, I can't stand up right now because my cramps are fucking killing me and I really just want to cry. Can I please go home for the day? I know that seems easier said than done, but it's really not because men don't get it. And I understand why they don't because they have never gone through it and they never will. I think it's just like, oh, just a silly little thing. Like, oh, you're just getting your period. Like, no, it fucking hurts. And I want to cry and I'm breaking out and I feel ugly and I feel fat. And it literally like my uterus is knives. 
I don't want to talk to customers. If a customer comes to me right now, I'm probably just gonna cry. It needs to be normalized that we can say like, I need to go home for personal reasons or for female obligated reasons. And we don't have to elaborate. I'm not saying that it needs to be paid time off. So we should get like our paid time that we were supposed to be there. But just being able to go home without asking and prying at a bunch of questions or just being like, no, we need you here. Like, no, I need to rest because my body is going through a lot right now and you wouldn't get it. And see, look, I, I honestly feel for it. I'm not a savage. I get it. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. You don't want to have to do it. I get it. I do. I, I do. I feel for you. But in the same vein, don't you think it would be, you know, equal if men had the same, you know, give and take with their workplace? I would be under the belief that most men would be okay if you happen to leave when this time in the month happens. As long as, you know, men get the same equal treatment that we get equal time off of work for whatever we feel is necessary for ourselves without losing our jobs. It doesn't have to be paid, just like you said. It doesn't need to be paid time off, but it would be as fair. And honestly, it takes two incomes now to, you know, to live, you know, at least equitably, or you just to survive, really. But even if you had, you know, someone, you know, a husband that could make enough, to, to allow you to stay home with the children, guess what? It would be white supremacy. I'm not joking. The lady in our next clip explains how the traditional lifestyle is white supremacy. That's why these videos of these young white women with perfectly curled hair and makeup talking about how they want to uh, cook and clean for their husbands and feminism didn't do anything for them are absolutely white supremacy propaganda. Because the truth is, in the history of the world, staying home and doing those things has only ever been afforded to white women. And white women have only ever been able to pull off that labor because historically, we've been able to exploit black and brown bodies to do it. And before you hit me with the, well, my family was too poor to do it, ask them, ask them. Go ask your parents, your boomer parents, who in their family had help? Because I asked mine. And I expected one side, one, I expected one of my parents to say, yeah, we had nannies. We had black nannies. I did not expect the poor side of my family to say yes. Even though we were dirt poor, mama hired a Hispanic lady to help her after she had a baby and then fired her once my sister started speaking Spanish. The trad wife fantasy is a white supremacy fantasy and it depends on the exploitation of black and brown bodies. And it also depends on being able to live with one income, which you can't do anymore unless you are like the top 1%. And so that's why MLMs and other pyramid schemes are intimately entwined with the evangelical church, where these white women are trying to embrace this fantasy that they're going to be homemakers and do nothing else. And then they realize that, oops, we can't survive on one income, but they still have to stay at home and do all those things. And so they're looking for ways to make money and still fulfill that role. And they get involved in pyramid schemes. See, this is absurd on its face right here. And here's why. Because most people realize that, you know, one person staying home, it isn't reasonable. That's not a reasonable thing to happen. Whatever happened with your family, you know, you, you, your family bringing in a nanny, that was your family. Your family was well off to do that. That was very few far between. You've been watching too many, you know, Hallmark movies. You, you read the book, uh, you know, The Help way too many times. That's not a thing that happened. That wasn't a regular occurrence, even in the white population, only at the top. That was things you've seen, you know, in movies. That's not real. That's not a real thing. So you applying that is dumb because most of the time it was the nuclear family. The father went off to work. The mother stayed home with the children. There was no nannies. That was stuff you've seen on old TV shows. There was nobody coming to help. And if there was, it was usually another family member. And you also, just to, just to put a fact out there, that you talk about white supremacy was the only one. Well, guess what? You think black people didn't have the nuclear family too? Even before civil rights, black home ownership was at a higher rate. Fatherless homes were very few far between in the black community, even before civil rights. So you talk about this white supremacy thing, it's not white supremacy. We already know by facts and figures that the nuclear family 
is the best outcome for children to be raised. A mother and a father, we know this. We have the numbers for a hundred years to prove that the best outcome is the nuclear family. You're not a white supremacist to think, hey, you know, I, I, would, I would love to be able to work off one income while the wife stays home and doing something there at home, you know, for extra income, but mainly to raise the kids. That's not a white supremacist idea. That's a nuclear family idea. And the fact that you think that that's white supremacy just tells me that you're a moron, that you're dumb. If wanting a nuclear family is being a white supremacist, well, guess what, lady? There's a lot of black people out there that want to be white supremacists. Ask any black man if they would love to have, you know, a wife and some kids and they go off to work and their, their wife raises the children at home. I'm pretty sure a good amount of them are going to say yes. Are you going to call them white supremacists? This is the craziest idea. You've seen way too many Hollywood movies and you think that that's how things are. They're not. That's not how things are. So calm your boots because you look like a girl's field hockey coach. And you probably couldn't find the man who would want to go out there and work and keep you as a housewife in the first place. I hope these clips show you that the hatred for men is strong in 2024. If you like the content, hit the like, subscribe, leave a comment underneath. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Simple Son. Peace.